Hi friends, welcome back to our series of sessions on sensors and transducers. Today we'll discuss about strain gauges. Let's see what's a strain gauge. A strain gauge is a resistor used to measure strain on an object. When an external force is applied on an object, due to which there is a deformation occurs in the shape of the object. This deformation in the shape is both compressive or tensile, is called strain, and is measured by the strain gauge. When an object deforms within the limit of elasticity, either it becomes narrower and longer, or it becomes shorter and broadens. As a result of it, there is a change in resistance end to end. The strain gauge is sensitive to that small changes occur in the geometry of an object. By measuring the change in resistance of an object, the amount of induced stress can be calculated. The change in resistance normally has very small value. And to sense that small change, strain gauge has a long, thin, metallic strip gauge arranged in a zigzag pattern on a non-conducting material called the carrier shown in the figure, so that it can enlarge the small amount of stress in the group of parallel lines and could be measured with high accuracy. The gauge is literally glued on to the device by an adhesive. When an object shows physical deformation, its electrical resistance gets changed and that change is then measured by gauge. Now, strain gauge bridge circuit shows the measured stress by the degree of discrepancy and uses a voltmeter in the center of the bridge to provide an accurate measurement of that imbalance. In this circuit, R1 and R3 are the ratio of arms equal to each other and R2 is the rheostat arm has a value equal to the strain gauge resistance. When the gauge is unstrained, the bridge is balanced and voltmeter shows zero value. As there is a change in resistance of the strain gauge, the bridge gets unbalanced and producing an indication at the voltmeter. The output voltage from the bridge can be amplified further by a differential amplifier. Let's see the variation of temperature of strain gauge. We normally require temperature compensation. One more factor that affects the resistance of the gauge is temperature. If the temperature is more, resistance will be more. And if the temperature is less, the resistance will be less. This is a common property of all the conductors. We can overcome this problem by using strain gauges that are self-temperature compensated or by a dummy strain gauge technique. Most of the strain gauges are made of constant and alloy which cancel out the effect of temperature on the resistance. But some strain gauges are not of an iso isoelastic alloy. In such cases, dummy strain gauge is used in the place of R2 in the quarter bit strain gauge circuit, which acts as a temperature compensation device. Whenever temperature changes, the resistance will change in the same proportion in both the arms of the rheostat and bridge remains in the state of balance. Effect of temperature gets nullified. It is good to keep voltage low so that the self-heating of strain gauge could be avoided. Self-heating of gauge depends upon its mechanical behavior. This arrangement is considered as a quarter bridge. There are two more arrangements, half bridge and full bridge configurations, which give greater sensitivity over the quarter bridge circuit. Still, the quarter bit circuit is widely used in strain measurement systems. Visualization of working concept behind the strain gauge on a beam under exaggerated bending. An excitation voltage is applied to the input leads of the gauge network and a voltage reading is taken from the output leads. Typical output voltages are five volts or 12 volts and the typical output readings are in millivolts. Foil strain gauges are used in many situations. Different applications place different requirements on the gauge. In most cases, the orientation of the strain gauge is significant. Gauges not attached to a load cell would normally be expected to remain stable over a period of years, if not decades. 
while those used to measure response in a dynamic experiment may only need to remain attached to the object for a few days, be energized for less than an hour and operate for less than a second. Strain gauges are attached to the substrate with a special glue. The type of glue depends on the re required lifetime of the measurement system. For short-term measurements up to some weeks, cyanoacrylate glue is appropriate. For long-lasting installation, epoxy glue is required. Usually epoxy glue requires high temperature curing. Strain gauge based technology is used commonly in the manufacture of pressure sensors. The gauges used in pressure sensors themselves are commonly made from silicon, polysilicon, metal film, thick film, and bonded foil. To see the composition of a strain gauge, each strain gauge is composed of metal foil insulated with flexible substrate, as shown in the figure. The two leads pass a current through the gauge and as the surface of the object being measured stretches, stresses or contracts, the change in resistance is measured. This change in resistance is proportional to the change in length on the surface of the object being tested. As shown in this equation, strain gauge work by measuring the change in electrical resistance across a thin conductive foil. The gauge factor, which is the sensitivity of the strain gauge, it converts the change in resistance to the change in length, delta R by R is the gauge factor normally called, which is multiplied K multiplied by the strain. Resistance is R in ohms, change in resistance is delta R, and again ohms, strain is in sigma and gauge factor is K. Now compression and tension are experienced on a strain gauge. As a strain gauge experiences bending, stretching or twisting, the change in resistance across the metal foil is measured by a Wheatstone bridge. The change in resistance that is measured is proportional to the strain experienced by the object. A user can determine the stress experienced by an object using Hooke's law as shown here by knowing the material's modulus of elasticity. So this is a stress versus strain relationship. For the stress supplied, the strain goes on, you have the proportional limit. Then this is the elastic limit or yield point. Then after this, you have a plastic behavior. And then after D to E, you have a fracture point. So this is the elastic behavior. So Hooke's law is applied up to zero to A. And Hooke's law is stress is equal to modulus of elasticity multiplied by strain. So basically stress by strain is equal to modulus of elasticity. Strain is nothing but a change in length over length, original length. So this is exactly about the Hooke's law. Then let's see the applications of strain gauges. The first application mostly used in structural health monitoring which is used to monitor structures after their completion. To prevent failures, strain gauges are used to detect and locate damage and creep. A specific example is the monitoring of bridge cables, increasing safety by detecting possible damages. Also, the bridge's behavior is unusual loads can be analyzed, such as special heavy duty transports. Next application is biological measurements. Measuring the strain of skin can provide a multitude of biomechanic measurements such as poster, joint rotation, respiration, and swelling, both in humans and other animals. Resistive foil strain gauges are seldom used for these applications. However, due to their low strain limit, instead, soft and deformable strain gauges are often attached to a host of garment. To make it simple to apply the sensor to the correct part of the body, though sometimes they are attached directly to the skin. Typically in these applications, such soft strain gauges are known as stretch sensors. For medical use, the sensors must be accurate and repeatable, which typically requires the use of capacitive stretch sensors. Next is on predictive maintenance. Many objects and materials in industrial applications have a finite life. To improve their lifetime and cost of ownership, predictive maintenance principles are used. 
strain gauges can be used to monitor the strain as an indicator of fatigue in materials to enable software systems to predict when certain components need to be replaced or serviced. Resistive foil gauges can be used to instrument stiff materials like metals, ceramics, composites, and other similar, whereas highly elastic strain gauges are used to monitor softer materials such as rubber, plastics, textiles, and the like. Next application is in aviation. Strain gauges are the standard approach to measuring the structural load and calculating wing deflection. Strain gauges are fixed in several locations in the aircraft. However, deflection measurement systems have been shown to measure reliable strains remotely. This reduces instrumentation weight on the aircraft and thus is replacing the strain gauge. Next application is repurposing. There are also applications where it isn't first obvious that you would measure strain to get to the wanted result. So for example, in the detection of intruders on certain structures, strain gauges can be used to detect the presence of such an intruder. This is done by measuring the strain change in straight change in strain of the said structure once the intruder enters the structure. So these are all the applications of the strain gauges. And that's all about the strain gauges. Hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you for your time.